Good morning, everyone. This is Peter Alberius calling in from Stockholm here from Svensk Handel, where we are hosting this uh, historic webinar. So, Zev, uh, we are looking forward to your perspective of the treat peace treaty and in particular in the respective areas of trade, of course. Okay, great. So good morning here from Tel Aviv. It's another sunny day. I'm only emphasizing this because you're in Sweden. Um, but um, we're, I'm really excited and happy to be here with you. And thank you very much to Peter and to Robert and to the Swedish uh, Israel Chamber of Commerce. Um, and I'm going to share with you a little bit about my experience and, and my um, and what is happening on the ground within, in, in regards to the Israeli business community. When we talked with Peter, we said this is going to be a more of a discussion than a presentation. So if you have uh, any questions during my, uh, uh, my, my talk, just feel free to, to uh, unmute yourself and just barge in. So I'm, I'm from Israel. It's rude if you're not. So, uh, so feel free, please, to do so. Let's look at what are the potentials between um, Israel and UAE. So the UAE is, uh, as you know, it's a, it's a relatively small country. We're talking about 9 million people that uh, only less than 20% are locals with uh, about 1.2% is, uh, is local, but it's a very rich country. It's their GDP, their import, their export is quite high. Um, you know, Israel has a GDP of 40, uh, a PPP purchasing power of, let's say, $43,000, which is more than uh, 42, more than Japan, more than Spain, uh, very advanced. Bahrain has a little bit less than 50,000 and uh, UAE has almost 70,000. So that's, that's, these are basically the, the scales. We're talking about a very sophisticated market with a very saturated market with a lot of foreign players already in place. This is something that we're already already telling a lot of Israeli companies. You are not coming to a virgin market. This is a market who already has a lot of players and you need to understand if this is the right market to you. Um, but the potential is, first of all, the fact that it's very regional and very primal, meaning that, first of all, there's a lot of excitement from both sides. So you, when you have this excitement where you have a lot of attention in business, it enables you to start doing. Uh, 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 it enables you to start doing business. There's a lot of uh, um, seeking of investments, a lot of funds. Israeli VCs are looking for investors. Or are looking for. Israel was never a regional player. Never. Uh, in the Euro, in the Eurovision, we are we are part of the Eurovision. In the in the soccer in, in the, so this is in the singing in the soccer we are part of the Euro Cup uh, we are, we were never part of any regional collaborations not in culture not in economy not on anything and it's funny because most countries usually tend to do business with their region with their neighbors and we don't this is the first time where you're going to have a regional economy. So the GCC market is the fourth largest importing uh, block in the world. And what they're importing mostly is technology. They have a big appetite to import for technology, not only because they, the, all of those countries are basically in the midst of a process of diversification from oil to technology and to more sustainable resources, but because they need it, because they have some challenges. The average temperature in the future is going to be 50 uh, Celsius degrees there. I know that in Sweden it's also due Celsius. So this is going to be, how, how do you inhabit, how do you live in a city where the average temperature is going to be so high? How do you create agriculture? How do you cool down uh, uh, buildings and infrastructure? So how do you operate within a climate change? How do you control smart cities? And I had a very co a big conversation with, with Peter about it because we this is also a, a potential for, for Swedish companies that by 2050, they are going to be number one in the world, passing Singapore, passing other countries in food security. I want to tell you a secret that Israel doesn't have all the solution. We have a very good branding of the startup nation, but we don't have all the solution. These are where we can do uh, third parties, uh, joint venture, working with other European countries and other European companies to join forces with the Israeli uh, innovative mind and entrepreneurship spirit and some solutions that we have and other uh, solutions that European company already have, or maybe European presence within the UAE. These are stuff that we can work. I would 
definitely bet on food solution. When I'm saying, I would say food tech and agri-tech, and agri -tech, these are two uh, sectors that I would definitely go on and, 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 and put my money on. And uh, also the airport there is a huge in terms of uh, air transfer. And uh, what they have done basically, uh, uh, they created those uh, areas of more than 40 free trade zones where companies can come, no tax, no corporate tax, no income tax, no nothing, no import and export tax. Company can come and basically create a, 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 a forwarding logistic hub there and to do trade. So let's say if you're in finance, you want to be in New York and London. If you're in trade, you want to be in, the, in Dubai. Uh, okay, so uh, this is asked by Carl. I'm just going to tell Carl the, the following. I think that currently, you know, Israeli companies do not work well with market research, not like European countries. They just steam ahead. I see robots doing like this. Um, Israeli companies are just <laughs> are just going forward. They're trying and then they're looking about the research. How about the bigger region? We have peace agreement with both Egypt and Jordan some years back. How will this play along with the whole that part? Wow, that's a that's a great question. That's a great question. So as you know, we have uh, um, a peace agreement with both countries, but they are very very cold peace. In, it, it's basically peace that um, works mainly with on, on security issues. But let's say on trade, we hardly do trade with Egypt and and Jordan, which is a shame. I think that there that there is a bit of awakening within, especially Egypt, because Jordan is a very pro-Palestinian country, and it's very hard for a business association within Jordan to do business with Israel. They're they're up for boycotts and stuff like that, so it's a, you can't do it publicly. But there there's a bit of awakening uh, within Egypt about this uh, uh, piece. But you have to do, you have to understand that these are two different markets. Um, where you have two sophisticated markets, let's say Israel and the UAE, that have a very strong GDP, very you know early adopter, technological mindset, um, et cetera, et cetera, buying power, stuff like that. Egypt and Jordan, unfortunately, are not as such. We're talking about big market. Egypt is a big market, but it's mainly a poor market in, 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 in general, and the solutions that they require are different. And I think that the main, the biggest problem is the mindset there. There, there's still a very uh, problematic mindset uh, or challenging mindset, I would say, that that disabling them to uh, start doing real business with Israel. But they need a lot of stuff. I mean, uh, agriculture solution, water solution in Egypt, it's a crucial aspect, and we're, we're we're working with them, but not enough. It's not. But it's a great question. Let's see how it. Let's see how it will push them forward. We're talking about the, the, the Arab world, but it's also important the mindset of an Israeli here.